Today I wanted to talk about a, an electrical problem, a motor electrical problem. The one I want to talk about was a ground. What is a ground? I know that a lot of times we misunderstand what a short open and a ground are, but it's very important that you understand the difference between them. We said before, a while back, that, well, when you have a motor, you have a motor like this, and you have the rotor, that shaft is attached, of course, to the rotor like this, and then you're going to have the windings that come in like this, and they travel through here, and eventually they go back to where they came from. So you're going to have your voltage coming in, basically volt voltage going out. When we look at a motor from the front or the back, let's say, for example, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be round like that, and inside, that's where your rotor is going to be, and there's your shaft that's going to rotate. We said that we had the windings. Well, the windings basically are going to come in like this, and they're going to go around, all the way around the motor like this. So what happens is, as your voltage comes in, the voltage travels through the windings, and it's going to go back out, but it generates a magnetic field. This magnetic field induces a magnetic field onto the rotor, and that gets it to rotate. If everything's working correct, whatever comes in has to go out. So in other words, you have electrons. What is electricity? Electricity is the movement of electrons. So however many electrons come in here, they have to go out. One of the things that happens sometimes is that, let's say, just here, for example. On this one, we have a very, very small connection. So now it's coming in. Electricity, remember, is very lazy. It always takes the path of least resistance. It takes the path of least resistance, and because of that, it's going to come in here, go to the casing. Now, typically, the casing, or yeah, the, the motor, the casing is going to be mounted on something. And what happens a lot of times, it goes through and it goes through the mount onto whatever. And where does it go? It goes to ground. Now, if it just so happens that, let's say, for example, right here, underneath it, underneath it here, we have, it's sitting on something that is insulated. What's going to happen? The electrons are going to come in here go through the casing, around the casing, and then they're going to go back out because they can't get to ground. This is insulated, is not touching ground. So what happens is you come along, and when you come along, you touch the casing. Well, like it or not, like I tell them in class, you're wearing these type of shoes. And what does that mean? Anytime you see that symbol, this symbol right here, what does that symbol represent? That symbol represents a ground. So now that means that you are a good ground, and because of that, the electrons are going to go through the casing, through your hand, through you, down to your feet, and to ground. What does that mean? Well, that means that, well, you just got shocked, you just got electrocuted. Okay? Now, what does electricity do to you? Well, the most important thing I always tell them in class, and this is usually a test question, the most important thing I want you to remember about electricity is that it can kill you. can kill you. It won't always kill you, but it can kill you. I have gotten shocked lots of times, and I'm not dead yet. So, one of the things that happens is that, well, like it or not, we all have a heart. And when the electrical signals travel through here, and they go through your heart, it messes up the electrical signals going from your brain to your heart, your heart stops. It doesn't know what to do, so it stops. Once it stops, guess what? You don't have any blood flowing. You don't have anything going to your brain, no blood going to your brain, and then you die. It, sometimes it can be like you see in the shows, you see in the movies, where people are, you know, have smoke coming out of them and all this other stuff. Sometimes it isn't. All that has to happen is the electrical signals going from your brain to your heart have to be disturbed, have to be stopped, and then, yes, your heart stops because it doesn't know what to do. So now you've got, you have gotten electrocuted. That's why it is one of the most important things you could do is to go ahead and 
have a ground wire on here. You have a ground right there. If the electrons are coming through here, what's going to happen is they're going to travel through the ground because this wire, this green wire right here, it has very little resistance. You have more resistance than that wire. So electricity being lacy, it's going to take the path of least resistance. It's going to come through the casing, through that, and straight to ground. So this is an example of a ground. Now what happens sometimes is that on this side right here, now let's say we may have a fuse here and we may have a circuit breaker right here. What's going to happen is when you have this, that circuit breaker is going to trip. You come here and then you reset it, trips again, then you better be testing this motor. The question is, what are you going to test it for? Well, open, short, and ground. Those are your three electrical problems. And open, basically, that line right there is open, nothing can get through, which means the motor's not going to run and you're not going to trip the breaker. If you have a short, which means that you have shortened the path, which means that now you're bypassing all of these windings that could trip your circuit breaker. So now you have to be able to tell the difference between an open, a short, and a ground so that you know what to look for. I have another video that I have made and you can look this up where I'm talking about what a short is and I explain what a short is. How do we find a short? Well, we have to use an ohmmeter and we need to know what the resistance is of this motor. The resistance is going to vary depending on the horsepower, depending on the voltage, and it's going to vary because of different things. So you need to know what that resistance is so you know whether or not you have a short. To find or to know if you have a ground, yes, you're going to be checking to see if there's a connection from the windings to the casing. And that is what a ground is, when you have it going from the windings to the casing. If you have less resistance, then that is a short. It's a big difference between the two. So there was a question about a short, there was a question about troubleshooting motors, and hopefully this answers your question. Remember, you're going to be looking for resistance here. If you do have a connection between here and here, or you read some kind of ohms, then you know that you have a ground. Remember, that green wire, that bare wire that connects to ground, it is the most important wire you could possibly have. Why? Because that wire could save your life. So keep that in mind. And if you have any questions, any suggestions, let me know. Julio with Aircon Academy. Send me a message. If you, there are other videos that you would like me to make, just let me know. Follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my page here on YouTube. And uh, I will see you soon.